VBA has some great looping capabilities. In this video we will only discuss looping through collections. Let me explain. VBA has three kinds of loops. Do loops, if you do not know the number of loops. For loops, if you do know the number of loops ahead of time. And then there are four each loops. They loop through a collection. They run faster than for loops. So if you have to deal with a collection, I would recommend for each loop. They have a very nice setup. Why are collections so important in Excel? Excel has a structure like this. So all the plurals are collections. Workbooks is the collection of workbook objects. Worksheets is the collection of individual worksheet objects. So we have a workbook in the collection of workbooks. We have a worksheet in the collection of worksheets. So all open workbooks can be found for the collection workbooks. All worksheets in a particular workbook can be found through the collection of worksheets. Charts is the collection of all chart objects. Sheets are more general than worksheets. They also include chart type sheets. Rows is a collection of all the row objects. Cells is a collection of all cell objects on a worksheet object. So if we want to loop through collections, we go preferably with a for each loop. We use a variable of the object type. For each O cell in selection is the collection of all selected cells. And we loop. For each OWS, for instance, in the collection of worksheets. For each O chart in the collection of charts. And we loop. Collections have members. Let's say we have five members in a certain collection. And let's just focus on this one. The collection of worksheets has, let's say, five members. And we use OWS as a variable to talk to all those members. OWS in the first loop will refer to the first member. Then it automatically refers to the second one, to the third one, to the fourth one, to the fifth one, and then it knows the collection is finished. There are no more members, so it stops automatically. And it does that pretty quickly. We are going to create five macros or subroutines in VBA. The first one protects all the sheets by looping through all the worksheets. The second one unprotects all the sheets. Then we are going to do one that protects the sheet but only the formulas in the sheet so that you cannot inadvertently change a formula. Then we will loop through all the sheets and make a print preview of each one. And finally, we will insert the sheet and add it to the collection of sheets. You do all of this in the VBA editor, which you open with Alt F11. And then you have to make sure that you will add through the insert menu a module. In the module, you put your subroutines. They will be added to module 1. Let's start with the first one. Protect all the sheets, that's how I called it. We declare a variable of the worksheet type, not worksheets, please. That would be the collection. So it will be our pointer to all the individual members in the collection. For each OWS in worksheets, there is the collection. We close the loop with next OWS. And we are going to say to each OWS protect it with a password, let's say secret. And you set a few variables to true, but don't forget to add the fifth argument and set that to true. That means user phase only. The user cannot touch any cells. But macros and subroutines still can do their work. Then we tell the user that all the sheets are protected now. Then we create a similar one, but this one is going to unprotect all the sheets. So we declare again an OWS one. We declare our own password variable of the string type. We ask the user first, do you know the password? I, I put already by default the password in there. You should not do that in real life, of course. If that is P-A-S-S, -S, then I let you go, else 
I'm going to tell you, sorry, that was the wrong password. I will not unprotect the sheet. So we are going to loop again through all the worksheets in the collection of worksheets, all the individual ones. And this time we use the unprotect routine. Make sure you use the same password. So if you don't have the same password as we used in the protect all sheets one, it will not allow you to unprotect it. The password here is our private password. It could be the same as secret, but I just made it a different one. For this is our private check. Do you know the password? That one is the machine's secret. That's the way you protected your sheets. And we tell the user they are all unprotected now. So I created two passwords, but it could be the same one. But this one is now determined already by the previous macro. If you say, yeah, but the user can easily go to VBA and find those passwords, you can block that. You go to VBA again, Alt F11, and under Tools, VBA Project Properties, go to the Protection tab, lock the project for viewing, and type your new password there. So if the user wants to know what is the password that the maker of this VBA code used, then you can lock that whenever they um, open try to open VBA, it will say, do you know the password? If they don't, they will not be able to see this. Now let's do the, do the one that locks only the formulas. It's the same one as the first one, protects all the sheets. This is the same, only this time we are going to say in the message box, all formulas are protected now and the rest you can still change. So wh what do we have to add? We talk in each OWS to all its cells and set its locked property to false. By default that is always set to true. That means when you turn protection on all cells are locked. But we turn that off and we talk only to the cells of a special type that have formulas in it and that we set locked back to true. So the others will not be locked. Uh, in case there are no formulas on a certain sheet, we get into an error, so we have to say on error resume next, so it will just skip this line if there is an error. And then we are going to create the, another one that is going to print out all the sheets, and it puts on top the name of the file, and at the bottom the name of the sheet, as many as there are. I call this one sub output. Declare a variable of the worksheet type. Loop through all the worksheets in the collection of worksheets. And set the page setup center header to the name of the active workbook. Set the center footer to the name of the particular sheet we are talking to. Don't say active sheet name for then it will be the sheet that you happen to be in will be on all the printouts. And you can set many more things in page setup. For instance, do you want print headings? I'm going to say true. And I let you experiment with all the others. Usually we want OWS.printout, but I'm just going to do a print preview. Finally, we do one more. We insert a new sheet. So we ask the user what name we should like for that sheet. We do that through an input box. Let's say they want to call it my sheet. If they cancel that input box, then S name has nothing in it. And we exit the sub. We look for all the worksheets for imagine that someone assigns a name that exists already. Nowadays you can have an unlimited amount of sheets and you don't remember all the names. So we have to look for all the sheets to make sure that that name does not exist. So if S name happens to be the same as the name of the first worksheet, the second one, the third one, etc, 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 then we go somewhere else. Before I go there, I want you to know that name checks are not case sensitive. So lowercase a a is the same as capital A a. So I check the lowercase version of the name versus the lowercase version of the sheet's name. If I find already an existing name, then I go to a label again. You can assign that anywhere. I assigned it here before the input box. Again, colon. 
Again, it's the name I invented. So if you create a duplicate one, it will put you back here and you can never get out of this basically a loop until you have a correct name. And if we do have a correct name, then we add to the collection of worksheets, we end a new one before or after something. I'm not going to add it before, but after the active sheet. That's what the comma stands for. And I assign that name that I had checked in the loop. Let's test it. Control Shift P is going to protect all the sheets. And it says all the sheets are protected now. If I try to change something anywhere, it will immediately alert me. I can unprotect the sheets if I want to. I don't have to show you the other sheets all are unprotected, uh, all protected. If I do Control Shift U, I have to know the password. If I change this, it will not let me do anything. It will say it was the wrong password. I'm going to accept the password. All the sheets are unprotected now, so now I can change anything I want. If I change that last number into 20, it will accept that. Now I'm going to look on, lock only the formulas. Control Shift L. All formulas are protected now. This happens to be a formula, so if I try to type in there, it will say no. You cannot do that, but I can change something that is not a formula. Then we are going to create print previews, Control shift o Here is the first print preview. It puts on top the name of the file. At the bottom, the name of the sheet, employees. I close the print preview, and it gives me a second sheet. I close that one. The third sheet, you see we have headers on. And it says I have no more sheets in the collection, so I am done. And finally, we do insert a sheet, Control shift i which name do you want? I'm going to say AA, click OK, and it put after employees, there I was, AA. If I do that again, Control shift i and I type capital AA, remember, we made that case insensitive, it keeps going back to the name, BB is OK, so now I have AA, BB. You want to know much more about Visual Basic. I made a CD-ROM that discusses all of this, Excel 2007 VBA. It has much more than what I discussed in this video. It has three huge modules, each of, of 500, more than 500 slides. This is what we talked about very briefly. It has much more on collections and loop statements. And it does everything discussed in part two, part three, all you could ever dream of that you would need in Excel VBA. Where can you find this tool? MrExcel.com, Amazon.com, GenesisPC.com. If you go to Amazon, you have to probably type my name, Gerard Verschuren, and you will find all the CD-ROMs and the books that I developed for you.